Hello, this is a bite sized presentation on the MT Trap D probe. The MT Trap D probe is capable of handling RFC compliant traps and informs. It uses the NetSNMP API to process the SNMP data before passing the event data to the probe's internal queue. The Trap Cube Max property is used to set the queue size of the queue that holds the events awaiting to be processed by the probe's rules file. Here we can see how the probe processes traps and informs. The probe can listen on up to four threads. This is described as the probe head, with the event queue reading the processed SNMP events, passing them on to the rules file processing thread, which outputs the processed events to the object servers. In this diagram more details is given as to how the probe processes the events. The probe reads the lookups and includes on startup and can reread these files when a hop signal is sent. Whilst processing events the probe may need to get naming details from the operating system or send SNMP get requests out to the network. These types of processing can impede performance and therefore care should be taken to minimize host lookups and SNMP GET requests whenever performance is paramount. When configuring the probe, ensure that you are aware of the types of data sources and understand the expected volumes and network restrictions. The key performance property is related to name resolution as DNS lookups and event host file lookups can impede performance when there are high event rates. For UDP traps, the socket size can be increased to improve the probe's performance, whilst increasing the trap queue size allows the probe to manage more events during a period of flooding, provided the probe is capable of draining the event queue before the next flood arrives. The DSA log and DSA period properties are used to log denial of service attack information, which occur when the probe is overloaded and is unable to process data. The flush buffer interval is used in conjunction with the buffer size to minimize the time taken to insert events into the object servers. The MT Trap D probe reads everything that arrives at the given probe port. To prevent data being read, you should use a firewall to ensure only traps from the devices and networks being managed arrive at the probe's port for processing. The probe properties protocol and SNMP v3 only can be used to minimize the data the probe processes. The DSA properties can be enabled to log data sources when the probe is overloaded and unable to process data. SNMP v3 allows traps and informs to be sent securely. SNMP v3 traps require the engine ID to be defined in the trap and the probe's mttrapd.conf file. The probe creates a boot time mttrapd.conf file in the persistent directory after reading the data from the human readable mttrapd.conf file in the conf path directory. The probe properties SNMP v3 only and SNMP v3 min security level can be used to prevent unwanted event processing. You can troubleshoot trap and inform processing using TCP dump or an equivalent application for the platform. If the trap is seen in the PCAP file but not in the probe's debug log file, this suggests the trap was not processed correctly in the NetSNMP libraries for some reason. You should ensure the latest probe and fix pack are applied to the probe server, then review the PCAP data in Wireshark to ensure the trap is valid. If it is an SNMP v3 trap, ensure the mttrapd.com file is up to date with the correct engine ID, username and password. It is possible to replicate traps data using the net snmp command snmp trap to confirm there is a problem with the probe rather than the device. If the probe debug log shows the trap data then the problem is with the probe's rules file. Review the rules files and additional login to see where the related traps event is being lost. With informs you may need to use TCP dump on both the source and probe server to understand why the probe drops the inform. Typically it is best to test trap 
or inform reception in isolation in a test environment. It is possible to resend traps using netcat. However, it is best to use netsmp's trap send in the first instance. If the event is being lost elsewhere after probe processing, review the object server's triggers and event replication if you are in a multi-tier system. The conf path directory holds the configurable mttrapd.conf file. This file holds lines of unique user and password create user statements. For SNMP version 3 traps, the engine ID must be given. This engine ID must be unique to the device. The device must send the trap at the same security level or lower than what is set in the mttrapd.conf file. In the SNMP trap commands, you can set the engine ID, user and password, as well as protocol, target host and port. The probe used in the mttrapd.conf file will log out the trap's details if the file was read successfully. The send trap details are highlighted for reference purposes. Most customers will want to use a single or peer-to-peer -peer pair of MTTRAPD probes. If this is the case, ensure that a single probe is capable of processing the expected peak trap volume. Review and use performance tuning settings. It is best to prevent unwanted data early in the event processing, ideally using a firewall, otherwise by using discard logic and flood rules processing. Where possible, use a non-root probe installation that uses a high probe port rather than the default port, and use the Netcall Knowledge Library for rules file processing. Always test the probe's processing before deploying in a production environment.